Guys, Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented. This is my family's favorite breakfast and we're never going back to regular cereal. Our favorite combo is to mix the cocoa with the peanut butter flavors to make the ultimate peanut butter cup collaboration with zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five net grams of carbs in each serving. This high quality cereal is fueling Reimagined. Use my code CHAIL2023 for $5 off your very own variety box and choose from Magic Spoon's best selling flavors like cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, and maple waffle, plus other awesome flavors, including blueberry muffin and cinnamon roll. Magic Spoon is so confident in this product, they back it with a 100% happiness guarantee, which means if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Click on the link below. Use the code CHAIL2023 to save $5 off your order today. Also, for my Canadian and British fans, Magic Spoon now ships to Canada and the UK. I'm sitting over here. I was asked to make a piece on Rachmanov. And my partner Ryan says, well, if Chemayev has left the division, and we're coming on the heels of a statement made by Chemayev's team saying he's trying to get bigger and stronger, to officially become a middleweight. However, if for a title fight and enough notice, we could still make 170. That's where we're a little bit confused. We just don't know what in the hell Chemayev's doing. Is Chemayev a middleweight or not? If we knew that, it would sure clear a lot up, but I'm still asked to speak about Rachmanov. Now, Rachmanov, so you guys understand, I don't know if that's his nickname. I don't know if it's his first name, and I don't know if it's his last name. That's his fault. And I know Rachmanov. I am friends with Rachmanov's manager who has heard me say, I don't know if it's his first name, last name, or nickname. And he actually sent me a text letting me know. I just can't remember what the answer was. I can't remember what he said, but he actually let me know. And my message to him that was bigger is, your client is undefeated. He is 15 and 0. He has knocked out eight guys and he has submitted seven. Perfect record. And the manager? corrected me and said, Chaley's actually 16 and 0, and he's right down the middle, eight knockouts and eight submissions. So the point is, we have a wildly impressive guy who has not mastered the English language, who is from a different part of the world, who can come in at welterweight, and in theory, possibly be the champion today. We have our new Chemayev. Fine. What am I going to say about him other than he sucks at marketing and one of his three names is apparently Rachmanov? What am I going to say? His opponent coming up. Okay, great. We're starting somewhere. Who is that opponent? Okay, I didn't get the name, but I got the date. They're going to be fighting on March 4th. They're going to be fighting on the same card as John Jones and Surreal Gone. So what does it mean for Chemayev to have that kind of exposure? I apologize, Rachmanov, to have that kind of exposure in the heels of having a report that Chemayev is gone. And I was asked to sit down and make a piece about that. And I'm stuck. I don't know what part of that you're going to find interesting. I don't know what part of that I could put in what's called a thumbnail to get your attention to click it in the first place. I imagine I'm going to have to put Rachmanov in the thumbnail. I just don't know if that's his first name, last name, or his nickname. I also don't know who his opponent is. I also don't know if this match matters to him. I also don't know who his trainer is. I also don't know what gym he's fighting out of. And those are things that I usually have for meaningful fighters. If you were to throw a meaningful fighter at me, and you ask me who trains him, I would know. I could go a little further and tell you who his workout partners are. If you asked me what the name of his gym went, I would know. I could probably even tell you where it was located. I could probably tell you what city or what state it's located in. I don't have any of these things on Rachmanov. That doesn't make that bad. That makes it mysterious. And mystery is good. Generally. It's a really interesting spot. Because if we have a guy who's 16-0 and 0 with all finishes, if we have a guy at welterweight who has never been beaten and has beaten more welterweights than anybody else in welterweight history, not just currently, it sounds as though we've got a guy that we would move in line for a title shot, but we wouldn't do it if we thought he was a knockoff to another guy who happens to be named Chemayev. 
And for whatever reason, whether it's fair or not, if we have in our perception that Rachmanov is a ripoff to Chemayev, we're going to have to do things with Chemayev before we do them to Rachmanov. But now we've removed Chemayev, at least possibly. At least possibly, he's now an 85-pounder. So what do we do with Rachmanov? How do I make them interesting to you? How do I make you care that he's fought 16 men and he's finished all 16? I thought that's what mattered. I thought finishing fights is what's important to you. Well, he's done it 16 straight times with no blemishes, and he's getting ready to do it number 17 under an opponent who's yet to be named on March 4th. How do I make that interesting? How do I make you care? What should I put in the thumbnail? What is it Rachmanov is not doing that you wish that he would do? What does a fighter need to do to be on the tip of your tongue? What is a fighter with a fight coming up on a pay-per-view against an opponent who we don't know need to be known? What ingredients are missing? And for the love of God, somebody, please tell me. Is Rachmanov his first name, his last name, or is that a nickname?